Hello enthusiasts of the fascinating world of celebrity lifestyles. Today, we delve into the luxurious universe of one of Hollywood's most iconic figures, the legendary Eddie Murphy. As a seasoned journalism professional, I discovered the secrets behind Murphy's lavish lifestyle and the glamorous ways he chooses to spend his millions. From luxurious mansions to lavish cars and philanthropic endeavors, we will explore the multifaceted aspects of this comedic genius's life, far beyond the glitz and glamour of the screen silver. All the details you need are right in this video. Let's dive in now. In the vibrant borough of Brooklyn, New York, a comedy prodigy was born on April 3, 1961. Eddie Murphy's childhood unfolded in the Bushwick section of Brooklyn, where his mother worked a grueling job as a telephone operator and his father wore the badge of a transit police officer while pursuing his passion for amateur comedy. Tragedy struck early when Eddie's father passed away when he was only eight years old. After this loss, Eddie and his brother Charlie were temporarily placed in foster care when their mother fell ill. Miraculously, their mother recovered and remarried. Lillian, Eddie's mother, battled tuberculosis, forcing her sons to spend a year with a foster family. To add to their misfortune, Eddie's father died suddenly a few years later. Despite this series of hardships, Eddie Murphy emerged with an indomitable spirit. Armed with an infectious sense of humor, ever since he was a boy, he entertained strangers on the bus with bizarre stories, earning the approval of his fellow travelers. Murphy's sense of humor isn't limited to bus rides he honed his skills through impromptu monologue performances at school. These spontaneous actions not only endeared him to his classmates but also to his teachers. During his high school years, Murphy's popularity skyrocketed, making him the most popular student. Crucial to Eddie's journey is the unwavering support of his stepfather, Vernon, an ice cream factory worker with few connections to the art world. However, Vernon encouraged Eddie's desire to grace the stage with his comedic talents. The young comedian found inspiration in the legendary Richard Pryor, a pioneer of the modern stand-up movement in America. Pryor's straightforward yet charming style left an indelible mark on Murphy. In 1976, at the Roosevelt Youth Center, Eddie showcased his burgeoning talent with a parody of soul legend Al Green. This show marked the beginning of his foray into the world of comedy clubs, starting in his neighborhood and eventually expanding throughout New York and neighboring states. Eddie's comedy journey even took him to the iconic Bay Area Comedy Club in San Francisco where luminaries like Whoopi Goldberg and Robin Williams began their careers. Juggling comedy gigs and studying, Eddie occasionally had to miss school to perform. When his mother discovered this, she sent him to summer school as a form of reprimand. Undaunted, Eddie continued his studies at Nassau Community College in Garden City, New York. In 1980, fate called when he auditioned for Saturday Night Live, a show struggling with declining popularity and the departure of key stars. It was here that Eddie Murphy's comedic genius captured the world's attention, setting the stage for the meteoric rise of a comedy legend. When he was 19 years old, Eddie Murphy was like a meteorite. Murphy's charisma proved irresistible during the three-stage casting process that marked his entry into the world of comedy. Incredibly, this audition would be the first and last of Murphy's career. Initially, Murphy took on small roles, but his talent quickly shone through, leading him to a coveted position in the main cast. Those involved with the show are convinced that Murphy is the ratings' savior, emerging as the face, soul and brightest star of Saturday Night Live SNL. His knack for celebrity parodies, such as memorable impressions of James Brown, added another layer of appeal. In one skit, Murphy's portrayal of James Brown's attempt to enter the jacuzzi became a comedic masterpiece. By 1981, Murphy was earning a commendable $4,500 per episode. Notably, the following season brought a significant raise, bringing his salary to an impressive $30,000 per episode. The entertainment industry quickly welcomed another attractive offer the lead role in the comedy action movie 48 Hours. This role not only earned him a Golden Globe nomination in the new Star of the Year category but also brought in a significant salary of $450,000. Rumors of a romantic relationship between Eddie Murphy and Whitney Houston added an element of intrigue to his growing popularity in the early 80s. Although the two were frequently seen together at events, public event and appeared to be on friendly terms but neither confirmed nor denied speculation surrounding their relationship. In the bustling year of 1983, Eddie Murphy, already a rising star in the comedic realm, took on a new challenge with the film, Trading Places. 
This venture not only showcased his comedic prowess but also earned him another Golden Globe nomination. The movie, set against the backdrop of the New York Mercantile Exchange, brought some unexpected twists and turns during its production. Initially, the filmmakers chose to shoot on weekdays within the real office space of the New York Mercantile Exchange. However, the presence of Murphy and his co-stars created such a commotion among the brokers that the regular workflow came to a halt. This unprecedented disruption prompted a swift decision to relocate the filming to weekends, ensuring minimal interference with the daily operations of the bustling financial hub. However, despite Murphy's lack of financial acumen, the film didn't lose its authenticity. Finance experts were brought in to ensure that the plot accurately portrays the dynamics of the stock exchange and the high-stakes world of commodities trading. These specialists worked behind the scenes, deciphering the complexities of the financial realm and providing valuable insights to make the movie's portrayal of the stock exchange both entertaining and believable. His meteoric rise reached new heights in 1984 when he earned a staggering $1 million for his role in the film Best Defense and starred in the blockbuster action comedy Beverly Hills Cop. What's interesting is that the film was originally intended to be an action classic starring Sylvester Stallone, but Murphy's charisma and wit turned it into a comedic masterpiece. On set, Murphy's improvisational skills took center stage. He freely choreographed all the dialogue and scenes on the spot, causing difficulties for the film crew and leading to many broken scenes. Despite the hectic pace of filming and exhaustion, Murphy, who was known to stay away from stimulants, eventually succumbed to coffee. The turning point came when he spontaneously delivered the now famous, Super Cop, monologue, which earned him not only $14 million but also a Golden Globe nomination. Eddie's success with Beverly Hills Cop led him to turn down a role in Ghostbusters, a decision that ultimately proved wise when the latter film's box office performance was unsuccessful. Paramount Pictures recognized Murphy's box office appeal and quickly signed an exclusive contract with the comedy powerhouse. During this same remarkable year, Eddie Murphy demonstrated his versatility by winning the Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album with the release of Comedian. Entering the music industry, he boldly released the album How Could It Be in 1985, challenging those who were skeptical about his singing ability. In response to famous idol Richard Pryor's assertion that he could not sing, Murphy enlisted the help of famous musicians such as Stevie Wonder and Rick James to create eight R&B and synthpop songs. The album has a dedication on the back cover. To Richard Pryor, my idol, on whom I bet $1 million. Despite initial skepticism, the album was a commercial success, including three songs written by Murphy. While subsequent albums released in the following years were not commercially successful, Eddie Murphy established himself as a multifaceted entertainer, leaving a lasting legacy in both comedy and music movie. His ability to blend flawlessly with his charisma and willingness to push boundaries continues to inspire new generations of performers in the ever-evolving entertainment landscape. In the tumultuous year of 1986, Murphy was given the opportunity to join the ranks of the legendary Star Trek series. As a huge fan of the cult sci-fi series, this seemed like a match between the stars. The script of the fourth part, The Voyage Home, has a tailor-made role for a charismatic comedian, an expert on UFOs. However, artistic differences arose and the collaboration never materialized. Instead, Murphy chose The Golden Child, which was originally envisioned as an adventure film but unexpectedly turned into a comedy. Despite his success at the global box office, Murphy publicly expressed his displeasure, questioning how a film he criticized could gross more than $100 million worldwide. The pinnacle of commercial success came with the release of the second season of Beverly Hills Cop in 1987. Faced with the studio's desire to turn the series into a television series, Murphy stood firm and made a deal. Half for the sequel, pocketing an impressive $8 million. For his role, at the same time, on the way to conquer the silver screen. Murphy continued to show his sense of humor on stage with monologue performances. His specials, Delirious, and Eddie Murphy Raw, were a huge success, the latter earning a place in stand-up comedy history by grossing $50 million. However, as Murphy's career evolved, so did the nature of his comedy. While his Hollywood roles were characterized by mainstream appeal, his stand-up humor took a sharper, sometimes controversial turn. Apologies became necessary for his more radical statements. And eventually, he left the genre altogether. The joy of stand-up waned and the difficulty in coming up with jokes took its toll. 
Coming to America in 1988 marked another important milestone for Murphy when he not only performed four roles but also contributed to the soundtrack, earning $8 million. In 1989, he ventured into directing Harlem Nights, a crime comedy that, although criticized at the Razzies, showcased the skill of the stylists involved. Despite being nominated for an Oscar, Murphy's subsequent films, including Another 48 Hours, Boomerang, The Distinguished Gentleman, and Vampires in Brooklyn, failed to match its success of his previous projects. The decline led to David Spade's infamous SNL joke, comparing Murphy to a shooting star. The comedian, offended by the joke, harbored resentment toward Spade, the show's writers and producers, leading to a decades-long estrangement from Saturday Night Live. It was only in 2019 that Murphy reconciled with the show that made him famous in the mid-80s. In 1993, the charismatic Eddie Murphy embarked on a new chapter in his life by marrying model and actress Nicole Mitchell. Their love story unfolded after a chance meeting at an awards ceremony, leading to a swift move in and a grand wedding in the opulent ballroom of the Plaza Hotel in New York, costing a staggering $1,500,000. Despite the glitz and glamour, their marital journey encountered turbulence when it was revealed that Murphy's first two sons, Eric and Christian, were born out of infidelity with different women. The mid-90s marked a downturn in Murphy's career. The third installment of the Beverly Hills Cop series faced setbacks, with the budget skyrocketing to $50 million, causing a filming hiatus. The movie's box office performance fell short of expectations, contributing to the slump. Even in the music realm, Murphy faced a setback when his collaboration with Michael Jackson in the video for What's Up With You earned the dubious distinction of being the third worst video of all time according to MTV viewers. Undeterred by these setbacks, Murphy decided to step away from his musical pursuits, making a comeback in the 2010s. Notably, he shared a friendship with the late Michael Jackson, appearing as a pharaoh in Jackson's music video for Remember the Time. Despite the challenges, 1996 brought recognition with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the release of the successful comedy, Nutty Professor, where Murphy's dedication to the role, involving hours of makeup and physical transformation, earned him accolades, including an Oscar for Best Makeup. However, the following year brought a mix of success and controversy. Murphy starred in the comedy thriller, Metro, but found himself entangled in a scandal involving a transgender sex worker. While he managed to convince the police it was a mere ride, the incident left a lingering public impression. Additionally, director Spike Lee criticized Murphy for not adequately supporting fellow black actors in his productions. Murphy's defenders argued that his involvement alone was a form of support. And over the years, he generously donated to causes benefiting the black community, AIDS charities, and homelessness organizations. In 1998, the comedy, Dr. Doolittle, marked another triumph for Murphy, despite the actor's well-known fear of animals, which made filming challenging. The success continued with films like, Holy Man, Life, Bowfinger, and Voicing Mushu in, Mulan. The year 2000 witnessed the release of, Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps, where Murphy showcased his versatility by portraying eight characters and earning a substantial $20 million. Reports suggest that Murphy's financial success soared with a percentage of the box office for several films, accumulating a remarkable $60 million, including an additional $20 million for the Dr. Doolittle sequel. His foray into voice acting for Shrek, where he brought life to the character of Donkey, added a new dimension to his career. Despite accepting a modest initial payout of $350,000, Murphy's shrewd negotiation for a percentage of the box office translated into a windfall ultimately earning him $3 million. This success even earned him a BAFTA nomination for Best Actor in a Supporting Role, a groundbreaking recognition for an animated character. Faced with these setbacks, Murphy decided to take a break from filming. However, he made an exception for Shrek 2, where he voiced a character and earned $10 million. In addition to his professional struggles, Murphy faced personal challenges. In 2005, his marriage to Nicole ended in divorce, costing him $15 million. Despite the separation, Murphy maintained an amicable relationship with his ex-wife. Murphy made a triumphant return to the screens in 2006 with Dreamgirls, portraying a struggling blues musician. This comeback proved successful, earning him the Actors Guild Award and the Golden Globe. While expected to win an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, Murphy lost to Alan Arkin, 
leading to his abrupt exit from the ceremony. During this time, Murphy had a relationship with Melanie Brown, formerly of the Spice Girls. The two had a child, Angel, and Murphy acknowledged paternity after a DNA test. Although he did not actively participate in raising Angel, he provided £7 million in child support. In 2007, Murphy lent his voice to Shrek the Third and starred in the comedy Norbit, which received unfavorable reviews, resulting in a Golden Raspberry Award. In 2008, Murphy had a private wedding ceremony with film producer Tracy Edmonds in Bora Bora. Despite their initial plans for a legal marriage in the USA, the couple broke up two weeks later. In the following years, Murphy continued to star in films such as Meet Dave, Imagine That, A Thousand Words, and Tower Heist, earning substantial payouts but failing to achieve success. Notably, in 2010, the Wall Street Reform Act included a provision colloquially known as the Eddie Murphy Rule, prohibiting the use of insider information, a concept resembling the plot of one of his films. Eddie Murphy, once hailed as a comedic genius, experienced a dip in his professional standing. Notably marked by the lackluster performance of Shrek Forever, which, despite conflicting reports on earnings, failed to make a significant impact. This downturn culminated in Murphy receiving the infamous Golden Raspberry for Worst Actor of the Decade and the unenviable title of the most overrated and unprofitable star in Hollywood. Forbes, a reliable source for industry insights, underscored the financial implications of Murphy's challenging phase, estimating that for every dollar spent on his paycheck, producers only recouped an average of more than two dollars. This financial analysis, coupled with the disappointment surrounding Shrek Forever, further tarnished Murphy's reputation. Adding to the turbulence was a publicized scandal involving Murphy's refusal to host the 2012 Oscar ceremony. Taking a principled stand, he sided with a suspended producer who faced backlash for inappropriate remarks towards the queer community. This controversy cast a shadow over Murphy's public image. Amidst this professional turmoil, Murphy found solace and stability in his personal life. Following a series of fleeting relationships in 2012, he crossed paths with model Paige Butcher. Despite keeping their relationship private initially, they welcomed a daughter, Izzy, in 2016, and two years later, a son named Max, marking Murphy's tenth child. While engaged since 2018, they have yet to legalize their union. This newfound stability in his personal life coincided with a subtle resurgence in his professional career. Murphy's return to the spotlight was marked by his roles in the TV show, Beverly Hills Cop, and the popular comedy, Mr. Church. In the latter, Murphy played a kind and generous chef working for a white family in the 70s, earning him praise for his performance. The turning point in Murphy's career came with the 2019 biopic, Dolomite Is My Name, in which he played iconic 1970s comedian and producer Rudy Ray Moore. Getting to know his hero face to face, Murphy enthusiastically green lit the project, demonstrating his newfound passion for his craft. Subsequent projects, such as 2021's Coming to America and 2023's Netflix romantic comedy, You People, have demonstrated Murphy's commitment to diverse roles and genres form. Currently, the fourth season of Beverly Hills Cop is in post-production and the holiday comedy Candy Cane Lane is in filming, showing Murphy's renewed focus on quality projects. While Eddie Murphy's career faced challenges and setbacks, his tenacity and dedication to his craft led to a remarkable comeback. Now, with a fortune estimated at $200 million, Murphy can choose projects that align with his artistic vision, allowing him to prioritize family while making a triumphant return to center stage Hollywood. In a strategic display of his power, Murphy signed a lucrative deal with Netflix a few years ago, a multi-project deal that would have pocketed him a staggering $70 million. This collaboration marks a pivotal show in Murphy's career, cementing his place as a go-to talent in the streaming world. To add to its portfolio, Murphy recently signed another consent agreement, this time with Amazon. While the terms of the agreed instruments are yet to be disclosed, it underscores Murphy's ability to navigate and secure partnerships with major players in the content space. The Amazon venture tips off Murphy's successful connections and long-range influence in his work shaping the future of entertainment. Beyond the streaming platform, Murphy's core assets remain open to multiple co-promoters. At the peak of his popularity, he collaborated with industry giants such as Toyota, Waves of Money and Mentos.
These partnerships not only enabled flexibility in his creative process but also solidified his presence across the media. In Eddie Murphy's real estate industry, offers a glimpse into the lavish lifestyle of Hollywood's elite. One such mansion, nestled on a 2.5-acre lot in Granite Bay, California, is a testament to luxury. Built in 1998, this architectural marvel captivates with its palace-like facade and cape enhancing its interior. Stepping through the majestic main door opens into a spacious living room decorated with double-height ceilings and floor-to-ceiling windows, creating a space filled with natural light. The interiors symbolically span 12,600 square feet, boasting seven bedrooms and a staggering 11 bathrooms, all meticulously designed with ultra-luxurious decor that transcends passing trends. The mansion caters not only to entertainment but also to large rooms, including game rooms with classic arcade machines. A fully equipped gym and a cinema room decorated with such things. The outdoor area is also enchantingly intimate, offering panoramic views of nature. The guest house welcomes guests with a sports court, barbecue area and beautiful infinity pool with hot tub. Sources indicate that Eddie Murphy parted ways with this Granite Bay gem in 2007 for the seemingly modest sum of $6 million a city, considering the potential extravagance it was worth. In the 1980s, Murphy expanded his real estate portfolio to include a sprawling complex in Beverly Hills, California. Over time, the estate has undergone significant structural reforms and expanded into an impressive 14-acre site. The 20,000-square-foot main house has a facade adorned with a vertical garden. Additionally, a 7,000-square-foot Moroccan-style guesthouse, a strategically planned stable for five horses, complete with rustic living areas, and a picturesque racecourse refreshed by waterfalls nearby water contributes to the appeal of this property. Originally owned by pop icon Cher in the mid-1970s, Murphy bought the property in 1988 for $5 million, 900. After significant renovation and expansion, seven years later he sold it for $1 million. Notably, today, the estimated value of this apartment complex has increased by a staggering $69 million, underscoring the long-term appeal and investment potential of celebrity real estate. Eddie Murphy's homes not only reflect his vibrant starry light but also serve as symbols of luxury that continue to capture the imagination of real estate enthusiasts. Since 2001, Murphy has called a stunning estate in Beverly Hills home. This luxurious residence sits on a 3.7-acre site, with an impressive facade surrounded by landscape gardens. Upon entering the villa, one will be greeted by spacious and well-appointed, intellectually appointed rooms. The color palette throughout many areas reflects the shades of champagne, adding elegance to the already elegant surroundings. The property is approximately 32,000 square feet, divided into 11 bedrooms and boasts an astonishing 17 bathrooms. The grandeur of the Murphy residence transcends the ordinary, with exclusive amenities reserved for estates of such grand scale. Notable extras include a bowling alley for recreational activities and a dedicated cinema room decorated with plush, comfortable armchairs for your viewing pleasure. Moving outside, the residence features a luxurious swimming pool with hot tub, creating the perfect space for relaxation and entertainment. The large outdoor space has a long green lawn, providing a peaceful and picturesque setting for the luxury residents. To put the price in perspective, the construction of Eddie Murphy's mansion was said to have required about $20 million in investment at the time. However, the current value of this lavish property has skyrocketed to about $40 million. Murphy's residence is a testament to his penchant for finding the finer things in life, offering a glimpse into the low keenness that shaped his lavish lifestyle. Additionally, in the quaint town of Inglewood, New Jersey, nestled in lush greenery, there once stood the luxurious Bubble Hill Mansion. A property that Eddie Murphy, the famous actor and comedian, proudly called as your own. Named after one of Murphy's songs, this sprawling estate spans nearly four acres of prime land, providing a luxurious retreat for its occupants. At the entrance of Bubble Hill, a grand staircase welcomes visitors into the lap of luxury. Beyond the entrance is a sophisticated interior, with countless rooms designed to attract and entertain. The mansion boasts a private cinema for exclusive movie nights a piano room that resonates with melodious tunes, and a professional recording studio for Murphy's artistic pursuits. For entertainment, the residence has a games room complete with billiards table, providing space for relaxing moments. 
An indoor swimming pool with soothing hot tub adds a relaxing feel to the property. Culinary enthusiasts will appreciate the gourmet kitchen, equipped with state-of-the-art appliances, while the dining room with table seating for 14 guests provides an elegant setting for entertaining friends and family. In addition to entertainment, Bubble Hill also serves Murphy's passion for cars with a garage that can accommodate five cars. Additionally, the property features a fully automated bowling alley, complete with two lanes, adding an element of playfulness and entertainment to the residents. In terms of scale, the mansion has an impressive built-up area of 25,000 square feet, including over 32 rooms. The living space includes six bedrooms and more than 10 bathrooms, ensuring comfort and privacy for residents. According to press reports, Eddie Murphy decided to part ways with the lavish property in 2012, with singer Alicia Keys becoming the new owner. Speculation has pegged the transaction at around $12 million, highlighting the exclusivity and value of this remarkable property. In addition to owning many valuable real estate, Eddie Murphy also has a diverse car collection. One of his notable rides is the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG, celebrated for its distinctive gullwing doors. Boasting a formidable engine, this vehicle can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in a mere 3.5 seconds, showcasing its high-performance capabilities. Depending on the specific year and model, the price tag for this luxurious automobile can soar beyond $220,000. In addition to the Mercedes-Benz, Murphy has been spotted cruising in an Aston Martin DB9, an opulent sports car with a reputation for its sleek design and top-notch performance. The latest models of the Aston Martin DB9 can command a price exceeding $250,000. Reflecting the pinnacle of automotive luxury, taking his car collection up a notch, Eddie Murphy has also been seen behind the wheel of a Ferrari 599 GTV Fiorano, a masterpiece from the renowned Italian luxury sports car manufacturer. The Ferrari 599 GTV Fiorano is equipped with a commanding V12 engine, solidifying its status as one of the fastest cars produced by the iconic brand. The price for this automotive marvel is estimated to be over $300,000, underscoring the exclusivity and performance prowess associated with Ferrari. Murphy's penchant for luxury extends to a Rolls-Royce Wraith, a high-end vehicle valued at around $350,000. This luxury car epitomizes sophistication, offering a seamless blend of cutting-edge technology and handcrafted opulence. However, the pinnacle of Eddie Murphy's automotive indulgence is the Rolls-Royce Phantom Drophead Coupe, standing as the most expensive car in his possession. This stunning convertible is tailor-made for true tycoons, featuring a meticulously crafted interior with an exquisite finish befitting its status as a symbol of unparalleled luxury. To bask in the opulence of the Rolls-Royce Phantom Drophead Coupe, one might need to invest a substantial sum, potentially reaching $500,000, depending on the specific year and model. At its core, Eddie Murphy's car collection reflects his over-the-top personality, combining speed, luxury and extravagance in a fleet that epitomizes automotive excellence. Eddie Murphy is also known as a person who likes to collect expensive jewelry and luxury vacations. First on the list is the Gold Cartier Santos, a masterpiece worth $10,000. This timepiece, renowned for its iconic square case and exposed screws, embodies the epitome of elegance. Its quartz movement ensures precision timekeeping, while the gold casing adds a touch of opulence to any ensemble. Next up is the Rolex Day Date 1803, a classic beauty valued at $15,000. This wristwatch, equipped with the day and date display, has a timeless design that exudes sophistication. The precision of its automatic movement and the richness of its history make it a sought-after choice for those who appreciate the marriage of tradition and functionality. Moving up the echelon, we encounter the Cartier Pasha, a timepiece valued at $20,000. The Pasha's distinctive round case, featuring a protective crown cap, sets it apart in the world of haute horlogerie. This watch, powered by a precise automatic movement, seamlessly combines bold design with refined craftsmanship. Stepping into the realm of high-end elegance, our subject proudly owns the Cartier Tank Francaise worth $35,000, adorned with diamonds. This exquisite watch, known for its rectangular case and iconic chain-link bracelet, transcends mere timekeeping and becomes a true piece of jewelry. The silver case adds to its elegance, making it a true status symbol. In the upper echelons of his collection, the $55,000 yellow gold Rolex Day date commands attention. 
This prestigious watch, with its distinctive president bracelet and iconic day-date complication, is a symbol of success and refinement. The yellow gold casing further enhances its opulence, making it a true status symbol. The Ronda Cartier, valued at $70,000, is a testament to the brand's commitment to craftsmanship and innovation. This timepiece boasts a Ronda quartz movement, known for its precision and reliability. The combination of cutting-edge technology and timeless design places this watch in a league of its own. Finally, the pièce de résistance in our subject's collection is the $90,000 white gold diamond Rolex Day Date. This horological masterpiece, crafted from the finest white gold and adorned with diamonds, is a true work of art. Its automatic movement ensures accurate timekeeping, while the diamonds add an extra layer of glamour and sophistication. When it's time to relax, Eddie Murphy takes luxury to the sea, often seen on spacious yachts. This leisurely pursuit is matched by his ownership of Rooster K, a 15-acre island located near Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas. Reports suggest that Murphy acquired the lavish property in 2007 for a staggering sum of around $15 million. The actor's lifestyle reflects not only his professional success but also his unabashed attitude towards excess and self-indulgence. Eddie Murphy's recent call for a Shrek spin-off featuring Donkey reflects not only his fondness for the character but also a desire to explore the untapped comedic potential of the Shrek mainstay in the universe. Donkey global appeal and unique brand of humor make him an attractive candidate for an independent film. As fans wait for the next installment of the Shrek saga, the prospect of a Donkey spin-off promises to bring a fun and fresh experience to the beloved animated series. Only time will tell if this idea will gain traction and if Donkey will actually become the center of attention for his own cinematic adventure. What do you think about Eddie's comments? Please leave your comments in the section below. We hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.